DJ Pro AI has made it so easy to start DJing and all you need is something you probably already have, which is your phone. So let's get rid of this iPad. The first thing that you're gonna have to decide is how are you gonna hold your phone and which mode are you going to use? DJ Pro AI for the phone works in landscape mode and it also works in portrait mode. It changes a little bit. And then here at the top middle button, we have these different view modes, classic Pro, Pro Looper Auto Mix. For this video, for you just to get started, I would highly recommend using Pro Mode in Landscape Mode. So that's what this tutorial is going to be. So take your phone, turn it over to Landscape Mode and follow along with me. In all my beginner tutorials for any DJ software, the first thing I always teach you is how to load up songs. Because if you're gonna DJ, first thing you're gonna need to know is to load up songs because DJing is about playing music. Don't let the other stuff confuse you or overwhelm you. At first, we're just playing music. Up here to the top right or the top left, these blinking musical symbols, this is how we load up a song. So if you press the left one, you will load up a song into the left one or deck A or deck one. And if you press the right one, it will be deck two, deck B, whatever you wanna call it. I just say it's on the right or the left because it's easier for me. Press this music select button on the right. Now we have our music sources. This is the next most important thing. You gotta know how to load your music, but where are you gonna get that music from? Yes, they do give us DJ music. They give us thousands of tracks that we could start DJing immediately, but you're gonna wanna DJ with music that you know and you love. That'll make it more fun and easier to get started. So I would highly recommend signing up for the Tidal streaming service. So if you, down here in the middle is Tidal, this will give you access to millions and millions of songs, not only just songs, but also DJ sound effects, scratch tracks, and then music videos, which you could watch one of my other, my other tutorials where I teach you how to DJ with music videos, which I believe is the future of DJ. So we are going to be getting our music from Tidal streaming service. So for example, once we're in Tidal, we can search and then all the songs. So I typed in 50 cents, we get songs, videos, playlists, artists, albums, anything. Pretty much any popular song, you could just load up right into a deck with Tidal streaming service, and it's only like $10 a month, so being able to have millions and millions of songs and not worrying about storage, especially if you're just DJing with your phone or your iPad, then this is a great route to go. So then when we press the track, it's gonna load, load up. And remember, we press the one on the right, so it loaded up on the right. We press the one on the left, it's gonna bring back where we were in our song search, and then we could just load up a song on the left. So we have a song on the left deck, and we have a song on the right deck. And then now we have a bunch of options. Now this may be overwhelming. Round thing here is called a couple of different things, either a jog wheel or a platter. What it does is it's meant to resemble the old school DJing with a record deck. So. If you move it, if you move it forward, it's going to move the f song forward. If you move it back, it's going to move it back. You could scratch with it. And then when it plays, you see that little line moving. That's called spinning a track. Now we have some information from the new update in the jog wheel. So we have our BPM and how much is left in the song, which is good information to know. And then let's move over here to the right, which is another really important thing in DJing. The BPM or tempo or speed of the track. So what it does is it tells you the speed of the track. Why is this so important? This is important because a lot of people think DJing is playing two songs to, at the same time, which is important, but that's not all DJing. But if you were to play two songs at the same time, then they have to be the exact BPM. So that's what this slider is for. It is hard to use because it's so small. So if you're DJing on the phone or with a small controller, you're probably just gonna wanna use this button up here, which is the most con controversial button in the DJ community. And that is the same button. Oh, it's cheating, blah, blah, blah. It's not cheating. Don't listen to what people say. But if you wanna match the exact BPM to the song on the other deck, all you have to do is press it once 
and then you don't have to adjust the BPM on this tiny BPM slider just to say that you're manually doing it. So that's what the sync button does. It also aligns the songs together. So if the sync button's on, both songs are going to be at the same BPM. The AI of the app is going to try to make the beats match up perfectly. It doesn't work good every time. It's not a quick fix. You actually have to know how DJing works for you to use it. But it's there. And we'll talk about it in more and more advanced videos. Now, down here is where we get into the fun stuff. So we have our Q buttons. What a Q button does, a Q button is kind of a placeholder. So if we find the spot in the song and we set a Q, every time we press that button, it is going to be at that part of the track. So I made a lot of videos on how to organize these. You could pick on the place in the song where you want to start and end. You could do it on a good vocal or you could do it like after the intro so that your track so that your song starts at the correct spot but basically all it does is it is a placeholder now nero mix there's a whole nero mix section but i'll show you the easy way to do it in a little bit loops it's self-explanatory you could set a loop two beats four beats however much you want the loops to be that could help you doing longer mixes and more advanced techniques and then we have effects. So we have the manual effects, which I recommend you using. We have flanger, echo. These are really good. Echo is great to do a really easy transition. And then over to the right, we have our EQs. So low is going to be the bass, the boom, boom, boom of the track. The mids is going to be what's in between the bass and the highs, like the melodies and some of the vocals. And then filter. Filter is going to add... Filter is going to add kind of, um, it's either going to take out the highs or take out the lows. And then down here at the bottom, we have some important stuff. Remember I told you about Nero Mix? So if you select the one on the right, it's going to be only vocals. If you select the one on the left, it's going to be only instrumentals. You can make acapellas and instrumentals in real time. And then over here, we have our play button. It's very simple, just like if you were listening to YouTube or anything else, it's a play button. When you press play, it starts. When you press pause, it stops. So you could have one. So in the easiest transition to do with your phone is just have one song play to the end and then play the next song and then keep on going. Over here is the crossfader. Very simple. To the right is going to be the right deck. To the middle is going to be both songs playing at the same volume. And then to the left is going to be all the way to the left. And yeah, anywhere in the middle will be a combination of them both. And that's all you really need to know to start messing around and start DJing with your phone right after this video today. And if you want to learn how to connect your headphones to your, how to connect your headphones when you DJ with your iPhone, watch this video over here.